In my previous videos, I demoed emulating simple contracts, simple EVM Solidity contracts on any Cosm Wasm chain by transpiling the Ethereum Virtual Machine bytecode to Cosm Wasm compatible WebAssembly. I also demoed an example with a fire and forget internal call to another contract where both contracts were deployed using an EVM interpreter template. So today we are talking about emulating the EVM create opcode on a Cosmosm chain and why you need an EVM interpreter, not just transpiler for this. And it starts from the opcode definitions. The EVM create opcode receives the funds or value assigned at creation and the EVM deployment bytecode. The instantiate function in Cosmosm requires the code ID of a previously deployed WASM contract. So, can you deploy a COSM WASM contract from EVM bytecode? Yes, but you need a general EVM bytecode interpreter as a COSM WASM contract and you can reuse the code ID for this interpreter and just deploy it with different bytecode. But, you cannot store the bytecode in the WASM module memory because you cannot change the WASM code and you cannot store it in the contract storage because you may overlap it with stored values from the contract logic. But you can store the bytecode in another contract, the EVM registry contract. This EVM registry contract stores all the runtime bytecodes for the EVM contracts and also stores a mapping between the 32-byte addresses from Cosmosm to the 20-byte equivalent EVM short addresses. So the registry knows how to deploy an EVM contract by using the code ID of the interpreter. In the background, it instantiates the new contract with the given deployment bytecode, so the instantiate function of the contract executes this deployment bytecode and obtains the runtime bytecode, which is then registered into the EVM registry contract. So now, each time this contract A is called, its main or execute function retrieves the bytecode from the EVM registry and interprets it with the given call data. And this is how the EVM registry can deploy multiple contracts based on the same code ID of the interpreter. So now we can have factory contracts that can produce other contracts. And in the next demo, I will show you a factory contract deployed with the registry that has its own deploy function that uses the create opcode and this create opcode has been implemented in a way that instantiates the child contract from the code id supplied by the registry and then this child contract knows to again register its runtime bytecode with the registry and then retrieve its bytecode from the registry when a transaction or query is sent its way so I have a local WASMD chain and a DAP here. And I have already deployed my registry contract. This is the address and the EVM interpreter template. And the code ID of the EVM interpreter is 38. Now we can deploy the factory contract and we will use Remix to ABI encode the call data. So we have the factory contract here that deploys a child contract by calling the deploy function and this is the child contract. It's a simple get and set contract with an initialized value of 10. So now let's select the factory contract, click on deploy and then copy the encoded input. This deployment bytecode, we will encode it for the EVM registry deploy function. So 
will have a value of zero. We copy the bytecode here, and then we copy the call data. And with this call data, uh, we will use it in our DAP. So this is the execution message sent to the EVM registry that is encoded in base64 and wrapped in a JSON, so it is COSM-WASM compatible. Because the EVM registry itself, even though it started as a Solidity contract, it has been transpiled into a COSM-WASM WebAssembly module. So now we can execute this and deploy our factory contract. And now we can take this transaction hash, go into our local explorer, and look for the instantiate message. And this is the new contract address for our factory contract. So now we can go into a similar DAP, paste this here so we can interact with the factory contract. And now we can go back to Remix and click on Deploy so we can get the ABI, the function signature actually, for the Deploy function. So with this, we go to our factory contract and execute this call data. So by doing this, deploy, this uh, calling this deploy function, we should get an instantiation of the child contract. And we have an instantiate message, and this is the address of the child contract. And we can paste it here in a similar DAP, and we can interact with it to see if it was deployed correctly. So we go to Remix, we select the child contract here, and we want to call the get function. So let's get the input encoding for the get function. And this is a query, so we will paste it here. And the answer is 10 in hex format. This is exactly what we expected because the initial value is 10. So the creation of this child contract uses the create opcode from the factory contract. And this is defined in WebAssembly right here. So this is the create opcode from the EVM interpreter template. And this actually constructs, so gets the code ID from the registry, and then actually constructs the instantiation request required by COSMWASM and adds it as a sub-message to the call. If we go back to our child contract, and if we get its 32 bytes COSMWASM address, and we go back to our registry, we should be able to get the runtime bytecode of the contract. So for this, we can go to Remix so we can encode our data and look for the get runtime bytecode, actually get runtime. So this expects a byte32 input, which we have here. So now we can just copy the call data and go to our registry DAP and use the query function. And this is the bytecode for the child contract, the runtime bytecode. This is it here because it is ABI encoded. So first we have the length of the bytecode and this is an offset from the ABI encoding. So today you saw that the create opcodes from EVM can be emulated on COSMWASM.